Welcome to the next video in the Anasi series from Your IT Explained. In this video we're going to go through the troubleshoot redistribution between any routing protocols or routing sources uh, from a theory perspective. This comes directly from the official Cisco examination topics 1.4. So firstly let's just cover off on what route redistribution is. To quote directly from Cisco document 8606 the use of a routing protocol to advertise routes that are learned by some other means, such as by another routing protocol, static routes, or directly connected routes, is called redistribution. So if we have a look on screen, this is essentially what it looks like. This is high level, I haven't defined or shown any uh, particular networks or IP address ranges, but it's where you have two or maybe more um, routing protocols or sources of uh, routing information on a particular device and you send that information from one source into the other. So we'd be sending OSPF routes into BGP on router 4 and then on router 6 sending BGP routes into ERGRP. Now we're also going the same way back again ERGRP into BGP and BGP into OSPF. So when you're going both ways, that's, a, that's called mutual redistribution. And we'll touch on that just a little bit more later. So another way to think of redistribution is route conversion. So if you're struggling with the concept of what redistribution is, it's converting uh, information or uh, routes from one source into the other. So to use um, a metaphor here, if you were to think of uh, image formats, it'd be like converting a JPEG image into a PNG image. That's all we're doing. We're you're essentially getting the same result. You're still getting an image at the end of the day, or in our case, we're getting routes at the end of the day, but we're just making sure it's compatible. Let's say there's something that only reads PNGs, but we've got JPEGs, then we convert it into a PNG. We're doing the same thing here. We're converting OSPF routes into ERGRP routes, or whatever it may be. So just some key information that you need to understand. Uh, this is something like the basics. Mutual redistribution, that's what I mentioned before, is when you're going both ways. So you could just go from um, OSPF into BGP and not back the same way. But if you do go both ways, that is referred to as mutual redistribution. Next, routes must exist in the routing information base to be successfully redistributed. So if you try to, for example, redistribute an OSPF route that your router does not know about into BGP, it's going to fail because it's not going to be in that router's rib. It needs to exist. The router needs to know how to get to that route through whatever other routing protocol it's coming from in order to redistribute it anywhere else, which makes sense when you think about it. Lastly, there are some destination specific behaviors that we need to learn, and that's what we're going to go through next. So this is some essential understanding. I'd be very surprised if you weren't tested on this in your exam, and it's something that comes up quite often in lab environments, and it's kind of like a basic understanding that you need to have with redistribution. And it's probably going to cause a few issues if you don't understand this, and you're going to find yourself needing to troubleshoot a lot more if you don't wrap your head around these basics. So firstly, if we redistribute from ERGRP into OSPF, it's actually quite simple. You just go into the routing process, so router OSPF1, and then you just state, okay, in OSPF, I want to redistribute ERGRP Autonomous System 200 into it. Then the last bit is subnets. So what does subnets mean? Well, if you don't put in the optional keyword subnets, it is optional, it's not um, going to include classless networks. So only classful networks are redistributed if you don't put in subnets. So in modern routing, modern day, you're pretty much always going to want to include subnets just so it includes all the routes. But if you go the other way, from OSPF into ERGRP, there's extra information that you must provide. So you do this, you start the same way, router, ERGRP, autonomous system 200, redistribute OSPF into 
EIGRP, so OSPF process ID 1, but then you must specify the metric. Now, it's not going to fail if you don't. The default behavior, though, when you redistribute into EIGRP, is to apply a metric of infinity. So if you don't specify a metric, it will apply a metric of infinity, which essentially means the routes are unreachable. The metric is so damn high, it's never reachable. And it's going to fail. You're never going to, those routes aren't going to be redistributed. So you must specify metric. So what we've done here is we said um, metric and then the bandwidth of 1 million, um, delay of 1, reliability of 255, load of 1, MTU of 1500. Now this isn't the only way to do it. You can instead specify like a default metric and then every time that you redistribute a protocol from then on, it will apply the default metric. Alternatively, you could redistribute and then at the end of the, um, the, the command, so redistribute OSPF1, you could then map it to a, a, like a route map. And in the route map, you then define what the metric will be. So there's a few ways around it, or a few ways to do it, but you must specify the metric when you're redistributing into ERGRP. So there's these nuances that are specific to the different routing protocols that you need to understand. Okay. Now we'll go into that a little bit more on the specifics later on in lab videos. Now this is something that you, you want to understand is the router that connects to autonomous systems or different protocols. This is called an autonomous system boundary router, ASBR. So if you see the term ASBR, it's referring to the router that is connecting the different types of autonomous systems or the different routing protocols together. Not to be confused with ABR. ABR, Area Border Router, is something that's like specifically, you'd say in OSPF, we got different areas. Let's say uh, this is in router, so router one to router four is in area zero, but then router one had a connection off to uh, area 100. Uh, router one would be an area border router because it is the router between multiple areas of OSPF. Now that's different to ASBR. ASBR, very different. Okay, so just understand that difference. You're likely going to be posed uh, different scenarios and questions that reference ASBR. So that's all for the theory video. Next, we're going to go through some of the step-by-step -step configuration um, instructions for how to configure redistribution in a GNS3 lab and we'll introduce some of the common troubleshooting situations that you may find yourselves in. Other than that, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you later in some of the lab videos.